Uh, welcome to Lesson 2.04. Um, here we're going to be looking at uh, tangent and normal lines once again and utilizing our newfound understanding of the derivative to make a more formal definition of tangent and normal lines and hopefully actually make the process um, a little bit easier. So to get started, go ahead and work through this discovery problem and in doing so, you should actually be able to um, come up with a definition on your own. So uh, here is the function f, it's graphed over here. Uh, I did my best to graph this as accurately as possible. I graphed it probably 15 different times, so um, go by the values that I give you here on the left um, of, the of the function, and I give you some values of the derivative. Um, and then work through a, b, c, d, and e. All right, so um, here we have the, uh, the answers to the first four, and hopefully each one kind of led you along um, and helped you understand and construct uh, the next one a little bit better. So remember, the derivative uh, is telling you the slope of the graph or the curve um, at any given point, and so f prime of 1, of course, will tell us the slope of the curve um, f when x equals 1. And so that should lead us into creating the tangent line for f at 1, because the tangent line is just the line that runs exactly alongside the curve at that given point. And so since we have that given point, that's very convenient, um, 1 comma negative 2, and we also know the derivative at that point, which is 3, we know the slope at that point is 3, and we know the point the x value is 1 and the y value is negative 2. And so using that, we can construct our uh, tangent line. And there it is. And that makes sense, right? The, uh, the slope of that line is 3. The y-intercept is negative 5. That makes sense. Then you do the same for c. And here we just need to remember that for the tangent, right, we use the inverse uh, slope. And so the slope here will be negative 1. And that causes us to have also a different y-intercept of positive 3. And we can see that that makes sense as well. And then uh, what about at f, uh, the tangent and normal when um, x is 4? Well, here we have a slope of 0. And so you can see what happens when you have a slope of 0 and you simplify, you end up with just a perfectly horizontal line, uh, th y equals 2. And so then for the tangent, you're actually going to have a perfectly vertical line that's going to go through the x value, so x equals 4. And so this should allow you to write the general form uh, for the tangent to a curve at any point and you should be able to incorporate the derivative in writing that general form. So if you didn't already, go ahead and try that now that you've seen some of the solutions, and then in a second we'll take a look at uh, the correct definition. Okay, so we've defined this before, and um, in this lesson we're going to construct a uh, more refined and cleaner version of the definition to the tangent of a curve and the normal to a curve. And so given a function f, the tangent to the curve at a point x equals a is the line defined by, and what you just have to remember here is that this is at the point a. And so when x is equal to a, the y value of that point is just f of a. And so we have general point slope form, which is y minus the y value of that point, which is f of a equals, and now here we have f prime of a. And this is, remember, this is the slope, right? The slope of the function f at any point a. And so f prime of a is exactly the slope of the tangent line times x minus a, which, remember, is the x value of the point that the line goes through. And so this should make a lot of sense based on what we just did. And, of course, from this, we can also define the normal to the curve in terms of the derivative f prime as well, right? Here we just have a different slope, which is the opposite reciprocal of the slope for the tangent. So here we have negative 1 over f prime of a. So let's construct uh, just a simple visual here because remember with any definition we want to be able to visualize it. That's what's going to allow us to memorize it best when we can recall that image. So let's go ahead and construct a graphical representation to make sure we understand this. Okay, so here we have just a generic graph f and you can see here that we're talking about for any point A, what is the tangent line going to be? Well, 
here's the point, um, any x value a is going to have a corresponding y value given by f of a, and we know that the slope of the function f at any given point a is going to be f prime of a, and so the slope right here is going to be given by this value f prime of a, and the values of the x and y coordinate for this point are going to be given by a and f of a. And so we can just construct um, the line tangent here using the value of the derivative at that given point. Okay, and so there's the um, tangent line. The slope is given by the derivative, of course. And so we can write the equation as we did right here using point slope form given the point that it goes through and the slope at which it is at. And of course the normal line to the curve um, will just have the opposite reciprocal slope and so will be perfectly uh, perpendicular to the tangent. So you can add that in and we'll go ahead and add that in now. And so there we have the tangent and its uh, slope which is the opposite reciprocal. So we can use this definition um, a little bit more easily than the previous one because remember the previous one involved us you know, finding the limit uh, definition of instantaneous rate of change at every point. And so now, you know, if you want to find the, um, the slope of the tangent line, you know, for multiple tangent lines, you really just have to find uh, the derivative function and use that for whatever point um, you're finding the tangent to the curve at. So this makes us more efficient um, if we have to find multiple um, tangent lines and uh, just in general, will help us be a little more uh, concise with our work. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this one a try. Uh, here we have a second degree polynomial and a couple of questions that have to do with the tangent. So go ahead and complete this one on your own. We'll take a look at the so solutions briefly um, and then move forward to one last definition. All right, so let's start off by finding the derivative. I'm just going to use the general definition, the, the first one that we've been using for a while. If there's one you like more, feel free. You'll get the same answer. So uh, limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to uh, post each step one at a time and we'll talk about it real quickly. Alright, so here I've plugged in uh, x plus h into my function and subtracted from it uh, f of x. And um, here I'm actually going to do the work within the limit, but remember if you are struggling a little bit with kind of keeping your work super neat and you're losing terms every once in a while, you want to uh, give yourself a little bit of advantage by going off to the side and actually simplifying each of these down and then uh, substituting them back into the function. Um, but uh, I've had a little bit of uh, practice with this, so I, I think I can keep it in order. Um, here, notice I've distributed in the negative sign, so I have negative 3x squared plus 2x. Here, I'm going to foil this out, multiply by 3, and then distribute the negative 2 in here. Um, and I should be able to cancel some like terms so that I can factor um, and cancel out the, the h's that are causing this to be 0 over 0. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and look for some like terms here. Luckily, these uh, 3x squareds are going to go away. Um, I have a negative 2x and a positive 2x. And um, at this point, uh, what I'm going to need to do is factor out the h because notice that all the terms that I have left um, in my numerator have an h in common. So I'm going to factor out the h um, and then evaluate my limit. And there we have it. I factored out the h value. Notice I've rearranged my terms a little bit. Uh, I know that there's going to be one term that still has an h involved and that's going to go to zero. And so I wrote that at the end um, just to you know, so that's closer to how I'm going to write my derivative function uh, in general. Now I evaluate my limit, and this will give me the value, or the function, I'm sorry, f prime of x is equal to 6x minus 2. And so, of course, this function will give me the slope of the curve f at any point x. And so now I can utilize uh, the derivative function to um, help me solve um, 
and find these tangent lines. So starting with uh, part A here, I want to find the tangent to f at x equals zero. And so first thing I need is that I need the actual point um, when x equals zero, and that's pretty easy. f of zero is zero minus zero, or zero. And now I need the derivative. Well, the derivative at zero, f prime of zero, shouldn't be too hard either. Six times zero is zero, minus two is negative two. And so now I can go ahead and write my function, which is gonna be y minus zero, which is equal to negative two times x minus zero. And this is just y equals negative two x, okay? So that's the tangent to f at x equals zero. And now we can find um, the tangent f at x equals negative two. All right, so uh, f of negative two is 16, and the derivative at negative two is uh, negative 14, so the slope is uh, negative, it's decreasing. And so I set up my slope, uh, my point slope form, go ahead and simplify, and I get the line y equals negative 14x plus 12. If you wanted to take a look at a graph of the function um, to check your work, you could, and it should uh, work out just fine. All right, now let's move on to b. So part b um, asks you the tangent to f that has a slope of zero. Well, how would you figure out where the slope is zero? I mean, it could be anywhere, right? Well, luckily, we have the derivative f prime of x in terms of x. So if we set the derivative, which is the slope, equal to zero, then when we solve for x, we'll be finding the value for which the slope is zero. And so what we want to do is we want to set f prime of x equal to zero. And what that looks like is 6x minus 2 equals zero. And the point then is when x is equal to, and you can do this in your head, right? Add two to both sides, divide by six, you're going to get positive one third. And so now you know that you're looking for the tangent line when x is equal to a third. And so you can go ahead and now go back and say, okay, I know the point now. That's where the slope is gonna be zero. And so now I just need to find f of one third. Right? And the reason you only need f of one third is because f prime of a third we just solved so that it has to be zero, right? So in other words, we know already f prime of one third is equal to zero, right? We're looking for where the slope is zero and we found it. Okay, so we set up, uh, well, first we find the value of f at one third, and I'll just take you through this, I, I have this in my head, so um, one third squared is one ninth, times three is three over nine, which is one third, and then two times a third is two thirds. So I have one third minus two thirds, which is negative one third. And so that gives me y plus one third is equal to, and I just wrote this out um, so that you can see where this comes from, the slope is zero. So it doesn't matter what x minus a third is, the slope is zero. And so when I simplify this, I'm just going to get that y is equal to negative one third. And think about what this is saying. This is what kind of a line? It's a horizontal line where the y value is always one third. And this should make sense because what type of a line has a slope of zero? A horizontal line. And so whenever we're asked for a tangent that has a slope of zero, and we've discussed this a little bit before, what we're looking for is a place in, uh, along my curve f that has a perfectly flat slope. And um, that's what we're essentially searching for and when we set f prime equal to zero. We're setting the derivative, in other words, the slope equal to zero, and that's gonna be the place where it's perfectly flat. And so this is what we call a horizontal tangent. And that's just a way of saying a tangent line with a slope of zero. So this is what's called a horizontal tangent. Okay, well if the tangent is horizontal, then how would you, you know, describe the corresponding normal line? So notice that I've just described the, the tangent line as a horizontal tangent or a horizontal line. 
And the normal line is the line that's perpendicular to that. And so what's perpendicular to something that's horizontal is going to be something that is vertical. And so a vertical line in this case is going to go straight through an x value and always have that same x value. Well, it goes through the point one third comma negative one third, and so the x value that it's going to have is always going to be one third. And so the for, uh, sorry, the normal line is going to be a vertical normal line, and that's going to be equal to x equals one third. That's going to be the normal to the curve um, at the point one third comma negative one third. So we want to add on to our definition of tangent and normal lines. Um, what is the, what happens if um, the slope is zero? In other words, if we if we end up with a, a uh, a horizontal tangent because notice that if we end up with a horizontal tangent we can't really find the uh, the normal line by plugging into our our point slope form so we just want to add on to that make sure that we have it really clear so if you go back to your definition let's just add this part. all right so horizontal tangents uh, the line tangent to a curve f at the point x equals a will be horizontal if f prime of a equals zero in this case, the tangent is given by y equals f of a, right? It's always going to be equal to that y value for that point. In this case, the normal line will be the vertical line, x equals a. And so notice that um, if we're going through some point, a comma f of a, and the line that we're working with is perfectly horizontal, then there's no slope to it. And in other words, the y value is always going to stay the same. It's always going to be f of a. And then the normal line, which is perpendicular to it, is always going to be equal to that x value. So it's going to be x equals a. So let's just go ahead and make sure we have a quick visual representation. Let's take a look at this, uh, this graph here. Notice where on the curve uh, is there going to be a, no a horizontal normal line. Looks like right here it's going to be perfectly flat. Right here it's going to be perfectly flat as well. Let's just use this point here. So if this is the x value a, then the y value is f of a. And since the slope is zero, the tangent line is just going to run through f of a, will be y equals f of a, and the normal line will be x equals a. And there it is. Um, that should make a pretty good amount of sense. Remember that what this is saying when you say f prime of a is equal to zero is really that um, the slope of the curve at that point a, the slope of f at a is zero. All right, so with this in mind, I'm going to give you a couple problems to test your craft on. Also going to include some of the things that we've learned previously about different ways to write the derivative um, and give you some good practice. So go ahead and complete these. Uh, be ready to present them um, when we're back in class.